if you want my honest opinion, this this kind of sounds like a little bit of insider information that they're they're letting out to market. Tesla stock is ripping higher, ladies and gentlemen, up about 5.5% at the time of recording this video. And we do have some pretty big breaking news that is causing this. Good old Reuters is reporting that Morgan Stanley's top pick is no longer Ford, it's Tesla. Morgan Stanley said Tesla's energy business could potentially grow to be worth more than the company's auto business in the future, as investors were likely to focus on firms that address climate change related issues. Keep in mind, this is Adam Jonas that is changing the top pick at Morgan Stanley from Ford to Tesla, and Adam Jonas is the top auto analyst in the world. So it definitely makes Wall Street stop and take a closer look at Tesla. Morgan Stanley also expects Tesla to take a more dominant position in the market for zero emission vehicle credit revenue, for which it recognized about $2,000 per unit in the second quarter, as legacy automakers pull back on their EV expansion plans. He says, quote, we estimate Tesla may account for as much as half of the sales credits in the market, supporting a 100% margin business for Tesla that may not be anticipated by the investment community at this time. Adam Jonas stressed that Tesla is shifting Shifting resources away from its auto segment as booming EV demand forecasts have dwindled. While Tesla is still making cars, we note the company is aggressively redeploying incremental resources, technology, people, and capital away from the auto side of the house, Jonas wrote Monday. We found it notable that Ford's management spent far more time in its Q2 conference call discussing EVs than Tesla did. Adam Jonas also says near-term expectations around Tesla's full self-driving called FSD and RoboTaxi, quote, may be too high, according to Jonas. And this is where I disagree to some extent. I don't think there's a lot of high expectations actually priced into Tesla stock around the RoboTaxi business, okay? I think... If you're a Tesla investor, you have high expectations, but the markets generally do not. If you go out and ask any random investor about Tesla's robo-taxi business, they're not going to have a clue what you're saying. They're, they're, they're going to not even think about that, right? It's not reflected as much as you think in Tesla stock itself. And especially as rates start to get cut, the markets are currently forecasting September 18th as that first date. And then November and then December and then likely in January again in 2025, Wall Street will start to look out more and start to discount future earnings a little bit more. And that can have a positive impact on Tesla stock in the near term. And thus, maybe if markets are only looking 12 months out right now, maybe markets perhaps start looking 24 months out when the RoboTaxi network would likely be launched. And wow, I mean, round of applause for Piper Sandler that has finally figured this out. They say, quote, Analysts have issued a bullish note. Tesla may have solved the self-driving puzzle. Don't roll your eyes. Buy Tesla. Quote, we think investors should consider the possibility that Tesla's decision to host a RoboTaxi event isn't a ploy to distract from falling EV sales. Piper Sandler is, is saying that maybe this RoboTaxi event means that Tesla actually is solving FSD, maybe some of the variants, um, maybe 12.6 or 12.7 that Tesla's testing now are far better even than what we're seeing today. And maybe they can even start the RoboTaxi network a lot sooner than what Wall Street is expecting. If you want my honest opinion, this this kind of sounds like a little bit of insider information that they're, they're letting out to markets. Not too often do you hear a major Wall Street firm like Piper Sandler say, quote, let me reread it. Tesla may have solved the self-driving puzzle. Don't roll your eyes. Buy Tesla. I mean, that sounds like someone internally at Tesla told Piper Sandler this, and now they're releasing that information in the 
really only way that they can. Piper Sandler on Tesla also says, quote, investors have grown accustomed to ignoring Tesla's hyperbole around full self-driving. However, judging by reviews on X, Tesla's update to version 12.5 is revolutionary. The firm thinks investors should consider the possibility that Tesla's decision to host a RoboTax event on October 10th isn't a ploy to distract from EV sales. Rather, it could catalyze a realization that full self-driving matters more than anything else for Tesla. The firm expects self-driving take rates to inflect sharply upwards starting around 2030 and that by the by the end of its 20-year forecasting period piper expects 100 fleet-wide fsd adoption for tesla it also expects fsd subscription prices to eventually rise from 99 dollars per month to over 500 dollars per month wow Tesla will eventually sell electric vehicles for $31,000 a piece at 0% gross margins, but ultimately, just like cheap flip phones, we don't think anyone will buy non-FSD cars, Piper writes. It tells investors to buy Tesla shares and keeps an overweight rating on the name with a $300 price target. I mean, that could possibly be the most bullish note for Tesla we've ever seen before. Zurich, Australia, a unit of insurance major Zurich, has entered into an agreement with Tesla to become the preferred electric vehicle insurance provider for the latter's customers in Australia. Elon Musk writes on X about 35 minutes ago, maybe an hour ago, FSD 12.5.1 starts wide release today. Please connect your Tesla to Wi-Fi to receive the update. Ford CFO on their EV Skunk Works team says they are working on their next-gen low-cost $25,000 EV. And the way that they're deploying or developing the vehicle is very different than the traditional way OEMs have developed vehicles in a linear progressive process, a process process we've basically been incrementally improving over the last 100 years or so, where its systems integration process is agile. The engineers do not rely on suppliers for design. They'll work with suppliers. We go down into the supply base a couple of times tears it's judging off of ford's last earnings call where they had negative 100 percent gross margins they lost as much money as they brought in about 1.1 billion dollars in their ev division i mean it, it, it does not look good for ford all of that sounds like mumbo jumbo to me and apparently it's being reported that Tesla batteries are helping Ukrainians survive nationwide blackouts. This article from Forbes says as used EV market grows, Tesla's Model Y and Chevy Bolt are hot. Summer 2024. One new trend is the growing number of pre-2023 Model Ys priced under 25000 via Edmunds. That's important because it makes the Tesla crossover eligible for the $4,000 federal tax credit. Tesla China is now allowing multi-color ambient interior lighting retrofit, retrofits for $180 US dollars for Model Ys produced between January 24th, 2022 and October 1st, 2023. Elon also said last night that Tesla's FSD supervised is currently slated to roll out to Cybertruck owners in mid-August. Now, what's actually very interesting about this now 6% rally we're seeing today for Tesla is the S&P is really not doing much of anything. You're up a third of 1%. And if you take a look at the Russell, the Russell's actually down over 1.1% today. You were having a good day to start off the day, and that totally flipped. You can actually see your big tech stocks are outperforming today. Apple up a half of 1%. Meta is up 1.5%. One, one Amazon is up 1%. NVIDIA is basically flat on the day today. Google is up almost 2% and Microsoft is up almost 1%. A lot of this could be just simply a reversion to the trade that we have seen recently where it's been, you know, short or sell your mag seven and buy small caps. Maybe there is some reversion of that happening today, or perhaps markets are saying maybe the fed's not going to be as explicitly willing to cut rates in September as the markets are currently pricing in a 100% probability. And maybe some investors are getting ahead of that and figuring, hey, if that's what we get with the economy strong or okay and earnings coming in okay from big tech, 
maybe you just see another piling back into big tech again. You can see here on the day today for Tesla and the interesting flow sentiment, you have seen 13 different trades totaling $2.54 million with a positive order value of 72%. Tesla's short interest of free flow is sitting at 3.76%. You currently have about $23 billion currently sold short in Tesla with 104.35 million shares that are currently sold short. Today, you have return shares of 918,000. Those are most likely shares that are being covered on. They could be shares that hedge funds institutions have taken out on loan, did not short, and just are returning. But a lot of the time, that returned number you uh, see here is shares actually being covered on you have borrowed shares potentially shares that are being sold short today of about 157,000 so on net you could be seeing as much as 760,000 shares actually being covered today which would make sense given Tesla stock is up over six percent which this move today is a big one if you are short in Tesla in aggregate short sellers have lost 1.4 billion dollars based on today's move alone and judging off of what we're hearing from these firms and wall street analysts tesla stock could go a whole hell of a lot higher than 233 if piper sandler is correct and tesla has cracked the code to fsd and that's why they're having the robotaxi event on october 10th I think you're looking at new all-time highs here. Again, it almost sounds like they have a little bit of insider information on that. Over on stock twits, Tesla has a sentiment of 38 today. So investors are bearish. It, is, is, it seems like retail just has the worst luck with Tesla. Everyone got bearish last week and coming Monday, stock's up 6%. I don't think you want to fight Tesla anymore if you're someone that's still fighting Tesla. If you want to own it, own it. If you don't, stay away from it. That's it. You're not going to be able to time this thing. You're not going to be able to effectively trade this thing. You just got to own it if you want to own it. And I think these prices are still a phenomenal buying opportunity if we even look 6 or 12 months down the line. 12 months from now, I think you will look back and say, damn, I should have bought every single share I possibly could have in Tesla at 233. I think it's going to be a, a, a no brainer. And if you had the chance to go back and buy at 233, if we get a theoretical crash at some point, I, I, I'm confident that you will probably choose to do that. But I can tell just based on the sentiment over on stock twits from retail investors, people are trying to game this. People are trying to catch the bottom and it's just not going to work. So again, this is another reason why I do believe this latest rally in Tesla is really not fueled by retail investors. It's been mainly fueled by hedge funds and institutions that are coming to this realization about FSD and about the robo-taxi potential and maybe even more important, at least over the last couple of weeks, the energy business at Tesla. It seems like every day Tesla stock is doing well, like outsizably well, five, six plus percent up days. Retail is bearish on the stock, bearish at 38. That's a pretty bearish number. Even on Friday, you were bullish at 56, which is not what you would expect to see. Message volume is normal today at 45. On Friday, it was low at 37. And the participation ratio today is high at 56. Over on Google Trends, the Cybertruck is at 71. The Model Y is at 28, which is unchanged from where you were just a couple of weeks ago. The Model 3 has actually went from 23 to 24, back down to 23. The Model S went from 11 to 10, and the Model X is stuck at 9. Google Trends data for full self-driving today is at 20, which is higher than where you used to trend before this free trial. Um, so suggesting the the take rate probably is still good for Tesla. We'll see if we start to see more promotional kind of incentive programs for full self-driving, like maybe, I don't think a price cut at this point, but maybe another free trial or something along those lines um, to help fuel um, a, a, a higher take rate. Because again, at this point, it's the interventions that train FSD 
and Tesla needs the interventions. Tesla needs the problems to make full self-driving better. And if if you're not getting enough interventions, that's a problem. And the only way you get more interventions is if you get more miles driven on FSD. Like, why do you think FSD is improving so rapidly? It's because last quarter Tesla had almost a billion miles driven on FSD. That's a lot of training data. And I do think Tesla wants to keep that pace up. Over on Google, Tesla continues to run about 4,000 different ads. And Tesla's global inventory numbers today for the Model Y mainly unchanged at about 6,200. Same for the Model 3 at about 4,700. Model X at about 3,300. And the Model S at about 2,500. What's actually interesting about today is you have 10-year treasury yields that are falling about two and a half basis points down to 4.175% and you're still getting this big big like massive underperformance of the Russell compared to the S&P or the triple Q's which is not something you would expect on a day where 10-year treasury yields are actually trading lower. The percent of stocks currently trading above their 50-day moving average is at 67.89%. So you do have um, more stocks than not that are trading above their 50-day moving average. And overall, that's a pretty healthy number. And markets today are still expecting um, a 100% chance of a Fed rate cut coming September 18th. And again, as I said in the last video, there is a chance that the Fed does not explicitly say September is going to be the first cut. If the Fed just stays nauseously neutral, if they don't commit to September, the odds of a cut in September will fall to some degree. And there's two more CPI reports before September. So if there's any... Um, you know, data that suggests inflation is not continuing to fall or the economy is stronger than we think, then, I mean, you're, that could be problematic, especially for small caps. And that's why I mentioned um, earlier in the video, that could be one reason why small caps are selling off a little bit today, because expectations are high heading into the Fed. Perhaps it makes sense to hedge those bets heading into Fed Jerome Powell. Now, on a technical basis, things could not look, look better for Tesla. I mean, you basically gapped up above your longer term trend line today. Very strong day. Tesla stock's currently at about $233 per share. As I said in the last video, you're likely to get a move to this 20 day moving average, in my opinion, this week, which is about $242 per share. Again, does Tesla get grouped in the mega cap? you know, category where you could actually see inflows if um, the markets start to fall, a concentration again into your mag six or super seven. Does Tesla get included in that concentration um, like Apple, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA and, and, and all of these other companies have? Or does Tesla get grouped into the category of small cap interest rate sensitive um, like it has been over the past, you know, one to two years now? I don't know, but judging off of today, Tesla's reacting more like your, you know, su super sick stocks, your other mega cap names, and not as much like small caps, again, with a Russell down about 1.1%. So things look really good from that perspective, the technical perspective as well. Tesla, after this rally, we're seeing today of about 6%. Again, the RSI is only at 53, so you're still neutral. There's still a lot more room to make that upside move. The MACD is basically in free fall. The MACD line is at 6.64 and the signal line is at 11.82. But these this is really not a big deal in my personal opinion. You'll start to see this curl upwards again and start to get more bullish. But you just have seen a pretty sharp decline in Tesla. And I would expect to see a sharp decline in the MACD as well. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.